Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Gabrielle Union strived for the perfection her father always demanded. But as a dark-skinned Black girl, she never felt like she was enough. In our new series, Gabrielle Union, Bigger, Badder, Better, we'll tell you how she learned to embrace the things that scared her and let go of her need to be perfect. Listen to Even the Rich on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts. Watch what crap is. Watch what crap is. Who cares what happens when there's so much that crap is. Crap is. Crap is. Hello, and welcome to Watch Our Crappins, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me today is the wonderful and hilarious Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? Hi, Ben. Great, Hi. great. Everything's great over here. Having a great time, enjoying my life, enjoying Bravo, enjoying a new show to talk about, that's for sure. Show. Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, it's the season premiere of Summer House Martha's Vineyard, which caught me by surprise. I had no idea this show was even in the works until the trailer dropped like a month ago. Um, so we're about to get into that. Just a not-so-subtle reminder that this Thursday we are doing a show in New York City at the Town Hall. Big show, big audience, talking Real Housewives of New Jersey. It's going to be hilarious. We're going to have a great time. We want all the people there. And, you know, we're very honored to be talking about New Jersey when there's going to be plenty of New Jersey representation in the audience, right? We're in the tri-state area. And then um, on Saturday, we go down to Washington, D.C., where we'll be talking Vanderpump Rules. Two huge shows. Go to watchercrappens.com to get your tickets. You don't want to miss it. It's, It's a special time. And then in June, we have the sprint to the finish of our Cheetah Brand tour. We start in San Diego. We go to St. Paul, Minnesota, then Chicago, Columbus, Boston, and we finish everything up at the Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut, our very first casino show. It's a grand finale. It's going to be wild. It'll be crazy. We're going to party. So uh, go to watchwhatcrappers.com to get those tickets. Please join us. If you miss it, you'll have to wait till next year. And, uh, of course, go to patreon.com slash watch what crappens to get access to our bonus episode and uh, crappens on demand where you can watch us, not just listen to us. And there's Discord. So that's all the fun stuff. Get the full crappens experience. And um, with that being said, let's dive into... Hello, hello, hello. Bro, Alexia News from the Alexia News Network. Oh, no. What happened? What happened? I'm so excited. I don't know what the news is. What is it? Breaking news, and we just finished recording our Real Housewives of Atlanta recap, oh, so this no, is coming a little bit late, <gasps> but Kim Zolciak has oh. officially squeezed all of the money she can possibly squeeze out of Croy and is now filing for divorce. Oh, my. According to oh. TMZ, Kim Zolciak is pulling the plug on her marriage, filing for divorce from Croy Beerman on the heels of the couple's financial yes. struggles. Get out. I get. Wow. Wait, hold on. I have to go look at this. I am looking. 11 at years together, four kids together. Kim says she's filing because the marriage is irretrievably broken with no hope of reconciliation. Oh. She also I... wants spousal support and to legally support her maiden name. Wow. They owe. Uh, 1.1 million in unpaid taxes, interest, and penalties from 23, 2017, and 2018. They also owe the state of Georgia 15 grand for unpaid taxes from 2018. Wow. Their big house was auctioned off or heading to the auction block. This is not good, but man, I, I didn't see her leaving him over that. Let me tell you something. There could never be more of a truer phrase than Kim Zolciak owes interest. She does owe interest because we've paid, we've been way too interested in Kim Zolciak and she owes it back to us. Okay. (laughs) But wow. You know, I guess when your football career dries up, you're not famous. You don't have the money anymore. It's time for Kim Zolciak to move on. Wow. Yeah, Kim's going to move on. I guess her religion didn't work out. 
Guess her. Remember when she was like, oh, we're going to have like a Bible. What was her? Guess her stupidity. She was trying to be all out. religious, like some membership for religious shit. I was like, yes, Kim, we're all coming to you for your for your Jesus advice, you fucking tool. Well, she's so going anyway, to be on that. Atlanta this season, right? I think she pops up in the trailer. So this is what's going to happen. Croy's going to be gone. Old name back. Redemption tour. She's, oh, I'm not racist. I just It was Croy's influence. She reunited with her mom storyline next season on Atlanta cast member she returns that's that's the trajectory for me that I see um do you hear that noise no what is it oh uh, vacuuming so sorry someone's oh, I, here cleaning vacuuming are you sure that's just not the <laughs> the inner workings of Kim Zolciak's mind <sighs> it's just the rest of that Wells Fargo account being sucked out <laughs> by the Zolciaks the Zolciak girls. Wow. Okay. That was some hot so, news right out the t- wow, right out the gates. Big it was. Hot news. Is it weird that I feel bad for Croy? I feel weird. I feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for Croy. You don't? I do. I feel I like feel he's, he's no probably like, household. but I but I thought this was real love. Stupid. Okay, so <laughs> let's move on. We have been given a gift by the Bravo Gods, and that is Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Ah. Yeah, Marth- this is great. I really enjoyed this premiere. To me, this uh, gave me had the energy of the original Summer House uh, premiere, which had just like a lot of people in a house. I didn't know any of them but they all seem to like bounce off each other in interesting ways. So I was like very into it. Uh, Yeah, I really liked it too. It's interesting. You know, you just naturally draw parallels to the other summer house because it's a spinoff. It's its own summer house. And they have the kind of the lead lady in this one is Jasmine. And she's kind of got that Monica from Friends energy. I think that Lindsay has where she's just real anal and like trying to be in charge of everything and trying to kind of, even though Lindsay didn't have that energy necessarily her first season, I think it took her a season to get more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But there are like, there are things like that, that I don't trust Jasmine's relationship. I mean, it doesn't seem like the strongest relationship, but also I'm like, this is summer house and this is going to go down in flames. The yeah, couple the, that starts like the Lindsay couple that starts like this, mm-hmm. not good. Uh, like literally, like there's another ever type in there, and you know you do have all the archetypes. You have you have the controlling type, like the the one that the sort of the more uptight one, which is Jasmine. You have the um you have like the controlling man, which is Silas, her husband. You have, also like, military, like military. ever. Yeah, you've got the hot girl, which is Jasmine. You got the bippy bop, which is Bria. You've got um, you've got like the fuck boy, which is Amir. You have like the fuck boy who pretends to be actually really earthy and like soulful, which is Alex. Alex hilariously, you have, you have the cool girl, which is Mariah, and um, you've got like sort of the dork, uh, which is Nick. And, and then you've like, got the token gay who is pressed. And the token gay. Yeah. So it's like literally like perfect casting. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty good. All right. So let's jump into it. Well, I, I have a question. Did uh, did we meet Jordan? Did Jordan come to the crappies last year? I don't know. I feel like she did. I feel like we met Jordan. I feel like I would I, remember. I mean, my God. Yeah. She's a stunner. I, she was gorgeous, and I just remember, I seem to remember meeting someone named Jordan who was in Playboy at the Crappies. And, uh, I oh, just, with Luke? I think that Luke brought her, but I could oh, be wrong. God, I don't want to start beautiful. gossip. I don't want to start oh. gossip, and I couldn't find any photos, but I'm, I thought. So um, I mentioned this only to play the name game and nothing more than, nothing more than that. Well, you can't do that with me because you know I don't remember shit. I don't know what I had for dinner last night. My brain does. My brain is like a DVR that's constantly rewriting itself. So uh, I, I don't I don't remember anything ever. So good to meet there's, you. There's nothing more to that story than that. I was just curious if that was the same person. So there, we're seeing everybody getting to the vineyard, okay? So we see a girl rushing to a plane. We see a guy taking a selfie. And he's like, Martha, I know you've been waiting for me on the way to the vineyard. And then we see who we find out later is Nick with the glasses. And he's like, I'm on the way to the vineyard. I'm on a plane. Cheers. Doing his Insta posts Mm -hmm. and then uh the gay who you know immediately is the gay even though he's very masculine he's not like i don't know why we know he's the gay i think because he's in the kyle richards felt hat so i was like (laughs) there's the gay 
<laughs> yeah, the the I just well, I could sense like a certain quality of his judginess that felt distinctly of our community. So I was like, <laughs> he's one of us. Yeah, he's like, um, you're about to see the smallest plane of, in life, so pray for all of us. It's like, yes, <laughs> that is very gay to say. And then, yeah, because in this first part, I was just doing like, I was like, cute guy, gay, glasses. So cute guy, who I think is probably Amir, is, is like Martha's Vineyard, I'm landed, I'm here. And we see it's day one of 15. So it looks like it's going to be kind of like the winter house template of shooting a show, you know, cram them all in for 15 days and see what happens. Well, you can't just get on and off this island. This isn't a like get off work, take the Long Island Railroad. Right. You know, it's not like jumping a house. jumping an Uber. Right. You have to. We're, it's explained to us that you have to take a plane or a helicopter or a boat. Or a ferry. Yeah. Yeah, a ferry to get here. So it's day one of fifteen. Also, it's like a trial, probably. Um, and Jasmine, it says Jasmine screenwriter, and I was like, yeah. Uh oh. Aspiring, like I, I don't know you. So opening a <laughs> bottle of wine dramatically, and she tells us, "I'm Mrs. Cooper, newly, recently. I literally just got married three months ago. It is definitely something we're adjusting to. It's our first time coming back as a married couple, and already, Jasmine, nobody cares. <laughs> no literally, cares. everybody is married. Shut it's the fuck happy. up. Yes. We've never seen you on this show before, and we don't care that you're coming back in another season." Um, married. <laughs> Nobody cares. You already got your gifts, so be happy with your goddamn gifts and your week of parties that you forced all of your gays to go to and contribute <laughs> to, even though you're never going to pay most of us back for that, okay? Please stop acting like there was a season of Summer House Martha's Vineyard before this that you have to catch us up on. There was no season. You're married. I know. It's not, it's not a novelty. Ja Jasmine's <laughs> like had the run of cheers in her own mind, you know? I, I think we're, yes. She's We're, on, we're actually in the Frasier section of her cheers timeline, <laughs> but like Jasmine, um, we're actually very fortunate because God, if this were the season where she was getting married, oh, it would be intolerable. The wedding showers, the bachelorette parties. Although I would not be surprised if she pulls some bullshit like, well, since we got married during COVID, we didn't get to have like the wedding we wanted. So we're going to have a do-over kind of wedding. I would not be surprised if she milks her marriage for do-over events all season long. I wouldn't be surprised either. She's going to get some free shit out of this. Yeah. So her husband is Silas, and he's like, this is the place where she became my girl, so it's great to be back here. She's like, oh my god, I'm blushing! And then they kiss, because they're doing the confessional together. I and wonder if she married him for his sparkling personality. Oh my god. She goes, <laughs> he goes, did I mess up your lips? Did you mess up my lips? And I was like, oh no, this is doomed. <laughs> this relationship so they go to is doomed. Yeah, so they're like now walking around this enormous house, by the way, enormous. But it's enormous because they probably have to put all the production in there, in there too. And uh, they go to the backyard, and she's like, this is what the ancestors wanted. And they're checking out the pool house, and Silas is like, when I visited Martha's Vineyard for the first time, I was a college student and probably 50 bucks in my pocket, and I rented a hotel room with three or four guys, and it was the struggle bus, but we made it work. What I'm trying to say is, we did a lot of we did a lot of porn, a lot of webcam stuff. We made it work. A lot made of jerk off vids, a lot of jerk off vids. <laughs> so um, there's a caterer coming, which is very exciting, and Preston comes in, the gay, the gay, the yes. gay attorney, and he's uh, yelling and hugging, and we find out that Silas and Preston are line brothers, which means they're frat brothers. And I was like, oh, God, here we go. And then, of course, sorry, Ben. And, of course, they run okay. right up into each other, and they do a secret fraternity handshake. And it's so secret that they do it into each other's stomachs so, like, the cameras can't see it. Yeah. It's like, are you guys kidding me with that? Like, what is this handshake open like a vault to your jack-off videos? What does this open? <laughs> it might. I had a secret handshake in my frat. Did but you not... hide it from other people so they couldn't see your secret handshake? Um, I don't know, but I know that like, yeah, my SIG up experience is definitely not the same as the Alpha Phi Alpha experience. That's for sure. So I feel um, like you shouldn't have any kind of secret hand, uh, handshake in fraternities because like fraternities, according to the internet, are it's that's like where everybody jerks off all the time. So I don't know, fist bump, hugs. Well, we, I was not part of any mass um, fr fraternity jerking off sessions and i didn't i didn't get to see or hear or witness any of those i have heard that that has happened in other fraternities but that being said um i do want to go back 
to something that happened right before Preston came in, which is that Jasmine finds a like a gla- like two glasses like that have beverages in them, and she holds them up and she's like, "Babe, why do you always do this? I never know which drink is mine." And he's like, "Does it matter, babe?" And she goes, "Huh? I guess it doesn't. <laughs> I literally have your last name now." <laughs> I'm like, "Ooh, this is gonna be this is gonna be hard. <laughs> she's gonna be a tough one all season long with this." This is going to be rough. And my first thought was like, why is she so shocked that she's married? You know, (laughs) (laughs) she seems she seems like she's at the end of her own pretty woman. Um, And then we find out that she's not a hooker at all. She's a Playboy model, um, which is not, you know, I don't I don't know what I'm saying about it. Well, we find out everybody on the show is a Playboy model, actually. Like, four of the ladies who are going to be on this show are Playboy models. And I was like, oh, so I guess once you find a decent man... Listen, when you're working at the Playboy Mansion, you're not really me- meeting the most decent men. So I think once you do find one that you're like, oh, my God, look, he's in the reserves. And he's actually nice to me. And he didn't throw a 20 at my head. And, you know, like try and make me do something to degrade yes you know degrade me in some way i'm marrying that man and then you get excited and then i got excited for her and then she advertises in any possible way that she's married even if it includes the fact that they can drink from the same cup which by the way they could have also done even if she didn't share his last name i just want to point that out that is the way that drinking from cups works does not care about your last name so then Preston is saying that, yeah, he thinks like Silas is a great friend. and um, But they had a rocky relationship at the beginning, which tells us what we need to know. Which is that Silas, Preston saw the jerk-off video and was like, hey, I know you. Oh, wait, no, I only saw your content. And then it was awkward. This is what we find out. Silas is an asshole. And Preston was like, no, at first. He was like, <laughs> hell no, I'm not going to put up with this guy's bullshit. But because Preston like has some sensitivity, he ended up getting close to Silas. Now, that was my theory, but then throughout the episode, I was like, well, Silas isn't an asshole, so where does that come from? <laughs> okay, mm. so then... Um, Silas is like, wow, you know, since the wedding, it's just been coming and going. You know how it is. I'm like, oh, God, him too? Yeah, it's been These going two are never going to shut the going. fuck up about this wedding. And then Jasmine walks through and says, oh, are you guys talking about me? Yes, his life has changed forever now because we're married. Ha, huh? continue. So then another car pulls up, but it's not a cast member. It's the caterer. So I'm glad we took some time to observe that. And then... um Preston uh, felt like he was in World War. He was talking about how he was on his like tiny plane. He's like, I felt like I was in World War One. I. I thought I was gonna be shot down over Germany. So now Bria arrives, and Bria has brought an unexpected dog. She has a dog named Milo, and uh, she has arrived with it. She has. She is a fashion entrepreneur. With this tiny dog, and she, Jasmine's like, oh, whoa, 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 is that a dog, and is it married? <laughs> because <laughs> no one told me about a married dog, <laughs> so, and um, Bria's like, this is, this is Milo, and you can see Jasmine is pissed, Yes, and she's like, so what's going on? She has, this is baby Milo, <laughs> so Jasmine's like, well, all of us walked in here with two legs, <laughs> and Milo walked in with four legs, so I don't think that was going to go past us without addressing the pause in the room. <laughs> What's up? Uh, and so then Bria does Oh, Bria. <laughs> probably, listen, I'm a person with a dog, so okay. I am not above doing this, okay, to get on a plane. Because how the hell else are you going to get your dog across the country, okay? You can't put him on a bus. Like, how else mm-hmm. are you going to do it? In the summer, in Texas heat, okay? So I'm not above saying this is my ESA animal. I got the letter from the doctor and everything to my friends i'm not gonna pull that shit who yeah. shows up with a dog on vacation and says this is my esa and like, animal a hairy ratty dog by the way i just want to point out milo is a stupid uh, dog <laughs> milo is one of those dogs you see and you say that's a stupid dog i'm sorry uh, uh, he's based milo is like a he's like a wiener dog and i love a wiener dog i think they're cute but he's like a long-haired wiener dog so he's like kind of ratty looking he literally looks like you should attach a pole to him and just sweep things up. You're you know? a horrible human being. No, that dog does not look ratty. It's a beautiful, it's very a fancy dog. dog. That is a fancy, it, long-haired... It's a fancy, ratty, long-haired dog. Something a ratty kind dog. of a dog. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to be bullied by 
by like dog people. I've decided. You know what? Like I like Bullied, dogs. You're the bully. You are no, literally because, no, 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 bully. No, no, no. Bob no, Barker is, is rolling over in his this grave. This is right a now. preemptive. This is a preemptive. Not going to be bullied statement. Because Betty White is in is, heaven, <laughs> flipping you off right now. Is what's happening? Because all the dog people just automatically. It's like God forbid you say that a dog is is stupid looking. We're ready. Like, God forbid, like, all the dogs have to be beautiful at all times. God forbid you say anything negative about a dog. Let me tell you something. This is a stupid dog. It is not a stupid it's dog. It's a stupid dog. <laughs> so, listen, I reserve, I reserve the right to change my mind, but I'm, I'm just, right now, initial impressions, flash judgment, stupid dog. Commercials. Here comes one right now. This week, May 8th through May 15th, Rakuten is having their biggest cashback event of the year. 15% cashback at over 700 stores. Key categories include apparel, shoes, beauty, home, pets, and travel. Listen, this is only going to be happening for a limited time only. Eight days! Rakuten has 15 million members who are already saving. Yeah, start all of your shopping at Rakuten. Your cashback adds up. Get the free Rakuten app and download the free browser extension. Rakuten also finds you the best deals, sales, and coupons. They do the work of searching for coupon codes so you save time and money. You can stack cash back on top of other deals like store sales and credit card points. At Rakuten, you can find brands like Kate Spade, Farm Rio, Expedia, Verbo, Lenovo, Blue Mercury, H&M, Tom's, Banana Republic, so many brands. This is the time to sign up and start all of your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the app to start saving Today. From Wondery comes a new series, Flipping the Bird, Elon versus Twitter. A story about what happens when the richest man on the planet decides to acquire a powerful social media company in the name of free speech. But does he have what it takes? It started off promising. Or is this all just about Elon? He's essentially mad that his tweets aren't performing as well as he would have expected them to. It really just felt like, okay, this really is just a platform being ruled by a dictator who does things on his own whims. And what will be left of Twitter by the time he's done? Basically, my entire team was was gone. By the end of it, infrastructure was just completely gutted. He'll, like, tweet a thing, and then everyone's like, we got to work on that now, because he tweeted it. I'm supposed to believe this man is a genius. It just felt like everything was kind of descending into chaos. Follow Flipping the Bird wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to episodes ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. I will say this. Emotional support animals should not look terrified. I feel like this dog (laughs) needs emotional (laughs) support dog. I feel like it maybe is a little bit scattered um, emotionally. So that's what I'll say about it. It's like going to a shrink that's always crying. Like, why are you going to that shrink? This dog is also, like, hiding under the bed. And I feel like, like this is the, this dog needs the emotional support. I think that actually, like, when she says this is an emotional support animal, she means, like, this is an animal I have to emotionally support right now because it is terrified of me. Yes. And she's like, they help with anxiety and depression. I'm like, well, what helps them with anxiety and depression? Because that's that dog has to be your dog. And that can't be easy because Bria already seems like the biggest pain in the ass. You know? If you, Bringing a dog unannounced, I mean, hell no. I think that's, what does that, the dog have to like, live with? That's so uncool to bring a dog unannounced. I actually really think it's not cool at all. Any pet. Any pet unannounced is not appropriate. <laughs> but um, uh, also... If you have anxiety to the point that you need an emotional support animal just to I don't want to be on vacation with you. How about that? Yeah. Why are you on a reality TV show? I'm not going and drinking margaritas for two weeks straight with somebody with their ESA animal. Okay? Because then you're going to get drunk or I'm going to give you like a microdose. And then before you know it, everything's going to turn to shit. Okay? Don't come on my vacation. (laughs) Yeah. And don't bring a stupid dog. So, um... So Preston is like... Oh, by the way, she goes, they help with anxiety and depression, and then it just cuts to the dog looking terrified, staring straight into the camera. Like, you fucking (laughs) kidding me with this? Dog's like, I was told I was going to a lovely little park in the neighborhood. Now I'm here? So So Jasmine's like, okay, we can do that. Okay, because you can't argue with emotional support animal, which is why Bria is saying it. You can't, like, people are going to get mad at me for saying, if you have anxiety, if you have an emotional support animal, I'm not going to go on vacation with you. It doesn't mean I can't deal with depression. It means, 
You stop that. Dog. Oh, look, speaking of, <laughs> listen, Bueller. let's see, it just went off. Bueller's not liking this conversation. It doesn't mean I don't want to go on vacation with people with anxiety and depression. It means I don't want to go on vacation with people who have to have their dog with them during margarita. Like, I can't, in, yeah, I can't enjoy myself with you. So um, the dog looks terrified, and um, ja- uh, Jasmine cannot argue with this because that's like a guard. Like, you can't say no can't to say someone's anything. emotional support animal, okay? Yeah. So Preston tells us, he's like, Bria reminds me of someone who literally spent two hours preparing for Miss USA and just didn't quite make it, <laughs> which seems like a pretty apt description of her. So, um, just so like, rude, but he's like, she's a lot. <laughs> she's, he goes, it was a lot to just see. I mean, it was a lot. <laughs> just to see her. So, um, <laughs> Uh, so Jasmine is so furious. She's like, okay, well, Milo, you and mommy come, you know, come with me to find a room. Okay. I'm totally not raging on the inside. This was supposed to be my vacation of being a married woman and no other competition for affection. Okay. So then she tells us that Bria used to work with her and they were proud playboy bunnies and we see pictures and of course they're stunning. I don't think you can be a playboy bunny and not be stunning. And she tells us that she not only met Bria, but she also met Shanice and Jordan, who are also coming this summer. So it's going to be four Playboy Bunnies. And she's like, you know, I hit it off with Jordan and Shanice, but not really Bria. I mean, we weren't really as close. But when Shanice said to invite her, I was like, okay, I'll invite her. I was like, so Bria and Shanice hate you. But (laughs) you don't know that Shanice hates you because Shanice only told you the stuff that Bria told you. Uh, told her about you. That's what I'm predicting. Right. So Jasmine also is very eager to set everyone up because she wants to be like, I'm married. And now you guys have to be married too. So that way you guys don't all go out and have fun while I stay at home with Silas. He doesn't want me to leave the room after 8 p.m. So uh, she's like, so we're, she's already talking about like guys for Bria. And Bria's like, oh yeah, I'm like, I'm probably gonna be the next one to get married. And Jasmine's like, oh, what are you talking about? Like, uh, I'm trying to give you the scoop on all the guys. Like, clearly there's like hot guys that you're going to get married to in here. And then we'll be all married and totally happy together in a married state. Right. She's like, and she's also, she's also one of those people who this is how she puts value on people. She goes, there's a guy named Alex. He's tall and handsome. And then there's a guy named Amir and he's tall. I was like, Oh God, she's one of those. We're all <laughs> that matters is a guy's fucking height. Can short guys catch a fucking break on these shows? My God, short Kings. So then Bria's like, um, well, I actually met a guy at the Cannes film festival. It's been five months and it's just been like wonderful, funny story. So I went out there cause I thought it was a, a festival all about recycling. Turns out it's about film and I met this guy and it's just, been I great. really wanted to talk about all the different kinds of beans that you can keep fresh if they're just <laughs> sealed properly in aluminum. <laughs> so she's like my new boyfriend now, Simon is German and he lives like in Munich and like, you know, he's like, I want you to celebrate your birthday here. And like, I'm going to like, I guess I'm like going to Germany and like, are there any black people there? Like what's going on? I guess, I guess I'll go. Okay, cool. Like sounds great. And Bria pretends to be supportive. She goes, Oh, you're with him five months. Well, I mean, I got engaged to my husband who I'm married to now (laughs) married life. Right. (laughs) And we only knew each other for six months. So I totally get it. I totally get it. Are you guys mixing Um, up your cocktails yet? But then not caring because you're like in a committed relationship. No, (laughs) not yet. Oh, that's something to look forward to. So she pretends she's supportive, but she tells us that, she knows Bria, and it's always a different guy with Bria. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if in like six months she's going to be like, a Simon who? Ah. <laughs> so then um, <laughs> we go to the kitchen, uh-huh. and Preston is like, Nick is coming too. I hear he's a Kappa. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. Big rivalry between Kappas and the Alphas. So, um, and then Jasmine's best friend Mariah's coming, and then Jordan's coming, and Shanice is coming. We keep on hearing that Jordan and Shanice are coming. This is really amped up. And now Jordan's en route, and she's calling Shanice, and she's like, Jordan's really dreading seeing a lot of the pe- being around a lot of people in one space, and she thinks the guys are all going to be like wild cards and. And then I think Shanice says she might sleep with somebody, but she doesn't know. She's due for some penis, but maybe Jordan said that. I don't know. No, Shanice I'll still said that. Out names. Oh, Shanice said that. And okay. yeah, Shanice also, uh, Jordan, it says model and DJ. 
It's like, okay. <laughs> so then um, she's like, well, when we did Martha's Vineyard last summer, Silas and Jasmine were engaged and now they're married. And so our entire dynamic is going to be different because I'm trying to have a good time. My good cousin, sister Jasmine can be a little Betty Crockerish sometimes. And so she's like, I know what she's doing right now. She's making bouquets of roses and putting little gifts on everybody's bed. Which is basically true. We that see is what Jasmine's Jordan's literally doing. doing that. Jasmine's like, um, if you sprinkle when you tinkle, please be a sweetie and wipe the CD. Okay? <laughs> Don't forget to pray. Love lives here. So um, now everyone's toasting in the kitchen. In, uh, they're doing shots and mugs, which I really like. I felt like that was a very real moment. And so now here come Nick and Alex. Nick is a sports brand manager slash stylist. Interesting duo. And then we have Alex. <laughs> that's an interesting, that's an interesting <laughs> crossover. For sure. That's a cross. That's a, we, on Atlanta, we talked about a uh, multi hyphenates that we don't trust. And that one, it's, I don't, it's not that I don't trust that one. I just don't understand that one. And then Alex is an advertising creative director. So he has no hyphenates. He's just an advertising creative director. Yeah. Um, both handsome, of course, because they're on TV. So, yeah. Um, it's good so then cast Alex, in general, by the way. Or Nick is like, uh, well, I first met Jasmine, you know, as a black creative in Brooklyn. And um, Nick is my fraternity brother. I love that. I'm going to start saying that. You know, I met my friend Christine <laughs> as a creative in Brooklyn. You know, <laughs> I know. just us creatives in Brooklyn. That's that's how we met. <laughs> I used to live in Brooklyn. I can pull that off. I usually just say we used to meet. In a, we met in a pasta factory because that's you know where what? we lived. <laughs> you know what? I was in Brooklyn. And I was in a WeWork, and I met her, and I was like, we do work. We work. We work. So, yeah, just two creatives in Brooklyn, just becoming friends, sharing oh. a house in Martha's Vineyard. And Preston's like, um, Nick and Alex look like kappas because they're kappas. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, my God, a frat boy in a Kyle Richards hat. Preston, <laughs> I'm trying to like you, but you're, you're pushing my buttons. You're pushing yeah. every button I have right now. And Alex is like, I respect all frats. I respect them all. But Kappas, I mean, we're the penthouse. No debate, no discussion. And then, of course, Silas is like, Alphas, we're the first black fraternity. So on Father's Day, Preston and I expect cards from Nick and Alex. We expect that. It's like, okay. So then, I expect uh, all four of you to shut up about your fraternity because <laughs> no one else cares except the four of you. Okay, keep that shit in private like most fraternity boys too on the internet thank you <laughs> so alex is uh saying he's not a drinker but because he tries to be intentional about what he consumes <sighs> i know ronnie just said something about it the, the word intentional and how it's when people say that uh, you know right. what i'm doing things to be intentional like i'm trying to be intentional about what i consume <laughs> i eat vegan ain't no pork on my fork a glass of wine every blue moon we can do that but I just feel better when I'm not drinking. I just love Okay. Listen. Listen, if someone doesn't want to drink, they that's not what they want they want on their body, that's fine. But I just love someone being like, I'm just trying to be intentional about what goes in my body and then does like thirst trap videos later. Like I love the idea of like presenting yourself as this like someone who cares about something deeper and more meaningful and uh, cares about a holistic experience, but then doing like thirst trap videos on the lawn the next day, you know? Right, because it's like not being intentional because it's really helping you. It's doing it for your brand on Instagram. Like, look, yeah. it's me. It's intentional, Alex. <laughs> um, like, uh, you don't need to make a monologue about not drinking, you know what I mean? But <laughs> let me say, hate aside, let me push the hate aside that is what drinking, ha not drinking, has done to his skin. Because that skin, that man glows like a nightlight. I mean, he is. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I saw that skin and I was like, how, when, and where? Tell me everything about what you do. I want every yeah. single detail, sir. So meanwhile, Nick, he's go he chooses a room that has a big closet because um, his wardrobe is the most, ex he's like, my wardrobe is the most extensive. So Jasmine hears it and she's like, oh my God, how do you know for a fact that your wardrobe is the most expensive? So she's 
winds up being angry for several hours because she hears expensive instead of extensive, which is hilarious. <laughs> and then it shows a video of 12 hours ago when Nick is packing to come here and he's got all these clothes laid out on his bed. And he's like, I've got trousers in every colors, suits, tuxedos. I was raised by a single mother. So when she went shopping, we went shopping. And I got my love for fashion at a very young age. I have enough clothes that will last me the duration of this trip and I will never wear the same thing again nick sounds sounds pretty intentional, intentional sound, with that now that's intentional <laughs> now that is intentional nick i will tell you i'm going to wear the same thing probably in every video that we do this week and we're doing six of them so i don't get you <laughs> and i don't support you but um hugs long distance hugs, hugs. hugs. congrats on your multicolored pants <laughs> so now an suv shows up and um, now this is Amir who's arriving. Amir's, uh, we have already had several like cute guys, and now we have Amir who's super cute. And uh, he's like, "I'm from the great state of Austin." <laughs> I mean, wait, Austin isn't a state. I'm from the great state of Texas in Austin. And then he does like his smile, like he's got this adorable smile. And I was like, "This guy, this is how he does it." Is so boy. hot. He's I so cannot hot. take but, like, how hot this fuck fucking boy. guy is. Blatant fuckboy, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. But, you know, I like when people are hot. Well, of course they know they're hot because, like, literally everybody's nice to hot people in stores and yeah. stuff. I mean, I think they know they're hot. Yeah. But I, um, I like when they pretend that they don't know they're hot. Like, it's surprising. Yeah. Like, if someone says, oh, you're handsome, they're like, what? Come on. That's what I, I was like. ugly in middle school. I had yeah, a bad, I day, was bad hair day once. I love a good pretend bullied story. You know, like, I was bullied once, and now look at me. It's like, you can do it too, ugly person. Um, and it turns out he's not that person. But for right now, he could be that person. So yeah. I'm like, oh my god, he's so cute. And then I hear he's half Lebanese, which of course, you I'm Lebanese. Like... You know, I'm half Lebanese. And I was like, oh my god. And he lives in your neighborhood, sort of? He's in yeah, Austin. Yeah, he's in Austin, so of course. Honey, make your move. <laughs> yeah, I'm Dude. sure I totally have a chance. You never know. I think when he's like, oh my God, chubby Bravo podcaster who's gay. <laughs> it's totally what I've waited for. I get 100 DMs a day, but this is the one. This <laughs> is the one. Well, the, And that it's not only that he's half Lebanese, but he was raised <sighs> by his Lebanese side. So he's like, he's like, I mean, he's really in the Lebanese part of it. Yeah, it's exciting. So I mean, we'll see what he cooks. That's that's the kind of eleven because there, you know, it can it can go a lot of ways. I want to see. I want to see what you can what you can cook. <laughs> so then Milo is a dog with some taste because it immediately runs up to this guy and just starts licking his whole face, just like I'm sure all of us wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so then now another car arrives and it's jordan like we're friends oh my god you're a model dj i can tell because you're wearing kind of like baggy pants like, this is so exciting i'm so glad you're here oh my god i hope we get to hook you up with somebody there's so many single people and they're so tall yeah so then they hug and then silas is like jordan is a really great friend to jasmine and she's really smart and she's really witty she just so happens to also be the party friend and jasmine is a married woman now she drinks out of glasses she's not sure hers but it doesn't matter because we have the same last name so uh it's gonna be an issue yeah you're kind of dead to me when you say things like that this is when i was already like okay silas i hope she leaves you i hope she cheats on you and then leaves you okay yeah. on, publicly on television because you're like the that. party friend the party of one friend <laughs> yeah Oh, so then <laughs> there's a was that, too, was that a, a little too harsh? I can go back no. to talking to my, about Milo. I just said I hope he gets like publicly humiliated and dumped on national TV. So I think you're good. <laughs> so there's a gym and a room with two tiny beds behind curtains and a queen bed in it. I guess that's like the overflow room. Like whoever gets their last yeah. is fucked as usual. Yep. And then the guys. Uh, then the the guy, yeah they're looking at that. And then there's also like a gym. So the guys are excited about that. And Jordan's walking around, and she's like, oh, cool. Well, the gym is gymming. The rooms are nice. And then she meets Amir. And it, like, slows down, and the music's all, like, ah, like, 
beautiful woman meets beautiful man. Isn't yeah, this it's beautiful actually literally all of America. They look at each other and just start laughing because that's what happens when people that beautiful see each other. It's like, ha, 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 oh my God, somebody as beautiful as me. Thank God. Someone who gets it. What's your bullying story? No, you. You first. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, so he, Amir says that it's talking about how Jordan's just like so stunning and he was introduced to her in a group chat. So he's like, obviously I did my research. And uh, she talks about how after college she posed for Playboy and she was the fourth black playmate of the year. And um, Amir's just like giggling because he's like, the moment I saw her smile, I knew this was going to be bad. Yeah. And then the next arrival is Mariah, who is a nurse slash screenwriter. Now, this is the first um, hyphenate that I buy. Yes. This is, see, this is not an asshole of a person. Yes, Yes. this is not an asshole of a person. This is like, this is what, this is what I'm doing. And this is what I'm doing uh, for my other hustle. You know, this is my hustle for my real hustle. Mariah, I love, like Mariah is going to be my hero on this show. Like she's going to be the one, like, I think they're all going to be assholes. And uh, Mariah is going to be the one that I just like latch onto and she will guide us through. So she tells us that she met Jasmine her first year in college and she was in an arm cast and Jasmine just ran up and uh, like was like, hey, and smacked her hand cast (laughs) as a high five. And she's like, and I wanted to beat that bitch immediately. But then we became friends. So I know her, Silas, Preston, and Jordan. So my strategy for dealing with everybody else, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. So then she gets a little to her. And then we go to a pool, the pool room, not swimming pool, but playing pool with Nick, Alex, and Amir. And Nick is trying really hard to look good at pool, and he can't hit it properly <laughs> no. with the uh, pool cue. He's in sports management, not sports playing. So, you guys, he's in sports management, and he has a lot of different colored trousers. So cut him a break. Okay. Yeah. So Amir's basically asking everyone, like, like, hey, so anyone who's interested in what, whatever. And he's bas- Nick's like, I don't know. I'm going to sort of, like, hold off before I say anything. And Amir's kind of like, well, uh, if we're going to do the whole, uh, you know, bros call dibs first thing, which I guess we're doing because I just said we're going to do it, um, I'm going to put dibs on Jordan. Okay, great, guys. Great talk. Great talk. You don't get to put dibs on people. What the fuck? Okay, I'm starting. I'm starting to get mad. And this is the summer house, but I hate when they do this. But we'll get to it. I have to like pace myself out. So the producer is asking Alex if Amir even has a chance with Jordan, and he just laughs and then sips his green tea because that's uh, what intentional people do. Yeah, like, I've met I'm not going to say anything negative um, because I'm not drinking right now, and I'm going to intentionally drink this green tea. Yeah. So. <laughs> so then, uh, then Jasmine goes up to Nick and she's like mad at him still that he said that he had the most expensive wardrobe. And he's like, no, I said extensive wardrobe. He goes, oh, I apologize. You know, marriage brain. It's a real thing. What can I say? <laughs> Commercials. Here comes one right now. So then Preston is noticing this energy between Jordan and Amir because that's what we do. We're gays. And uh, he's like, you know, it's cute, I guess. You know, he's like, well, I'm not going to stir any drama, but if I need to, I have a big old spoon in my hand. And by the way, he's doing this uh, confessional from what's called the truth booth. Yeah, the truth booth. Uh, Trying to, after 30 years, trying to put a new spin on the confessional. So uh, then Nick, meanwhile, uh, he's, you know, he has, Nick has eyes for Jordan too. Uh, and he's saying that like, you know, like if I pursue a woman, she will know it. She will feel the energy that I'm reverberating to her. She's going to feel it. And then Jordan's like, Ugh, Nick, like he just slid into my DMs. I had to put him on restrict. I was tired of like the heart eyes and I was tired of the fire signs responding to my stories. And uh, I just think he's whack. Yeah, this the way he said it, like, you'll notice if I like you, you're going to feel that energy reverberating right into you. It's like, that's called harassment, sir. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so then we see her stories that she's referring to, and this is the kind of person that makes me crazy because 
she's posting like all these gorgeous like her whole timeline is like model poses where she's like in a bikini crop top and like short shorts like squatting and like giving sexy poses and then guys like sending her hearts and she's like oh my god i get it i'm hot why aren't you asking me what kind of books i'm reading i'm like then do a fucking story from a library (laughs) like my god that's like amir you because you know amir is the same way he's posting like shirtless all this shit like we know you know what you're doing stop acting like everybody's supposed to treat you like something else that's literally like what you're putting out there for us yeah it's it's like classic thirst trap thing when a thirst trap doesn't really want to admit to being a thirst trap it's like i'm just being me i'm just doing this because i'm expressing my body i'm expressing it's like myself. a club sandwich getting annoyed that i ordered it off the menu <laughs> Yeah, Jordan is very much all about, like, she's like, I mean, I know I'm, like, hot. I know I'm, like, devastatingly beautiful. But, like, ask me a question about me. Which, by the way, is a fair request. But it's just, it's funny when hot people do that. (laughs) It's just always very, very funny when people, it's just like uh, Alex talking about being intentional and then posting thirst traps, you know? Well, it's also really annoying because she's someone who's like, I'm hot, I get it. What else do you want to talk about? I'm like, okay, you are hot. I'm not going to take that away from you or say something like, well, you're not that hot because you are that hot. Um, Gross that you say shit like that, you know? Pretend that you're not that hot because when you say things like, I know I'm hot, like, I get it. All I can wish for you is age. I just (laughs) want to, every time someone acts like this, I want to follow them on Instagram and just get pleasure out of every day watching you age slightly more because I know how much it's hurting your brand. Okay? Yeah. That That being said, that being said, Nick, (laughs) like, if you've sent um a heart and a uh, and a fire emoji and like what like eggplants or whatever like 45 times in a row yes <laughs> or 10 times in a row or seven times Gross. in a row without even a response Gross. it's time to like move on to a new thirst trap it's time to stop harassing people online also <laughs> all this jordan stuff sounds like it's totally out of place which because we're talking about something kind of that from the future later. now right so we're kind of mixing up parts of the thing but yeah nick gross so silas <laughs> is wooing about something oh because preston walks through the kitchen and goes hey y'all just wanted everyone to know jordan and um amir are about to fuck okay bye <laughs> so now it's time to eat it's, it's time for the group dinner and this is amir's first time at the vineyard and he's excited to be in a house full of people who look like him and uh, he's talked about how his mom was born in Saudi Arabia and and then she was raised in Lebanon and then he speaks some Arabic you know which was really cool and so keep up bro but when I just have to say I know what Alex means obviously like not growing up in a black community to like be actually in a house full of black people surrounding you has got to be something I just when he said that I was like I've literally never said that in my life like wow I'm so glad to be in a house of people that look like me. Like, what is it? Auditions for like Uncle Fester, <laughs> like like in the in Wednesday. Like, who who is that going to be exactly? For I was just know. thinking, God, thank God, I've never walked into a room of people that look <laughs> like me. You know, I was like, what are we? What are you robbing a bank? Are we? Are we all trying to be like Vin, Di- Vin Diesel's current stand-in, not his original stand-in, his current? <laughs> Vin Diesel and Fast X coming to a theater near you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but either way, he's saying, obviously, in this situation that he's been, you know, raised in a predominantly white community. So he's very excited right. to be in a space of, like, black people. Or there is a chance he was saying, I've been raised around a lot of really ugly people, and thank God I'm finally <laughs> around some super hot people. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so uh, then Amir, he talks about how he doesn't know his dad and, like, how he didn't have, like, he basically, like, he didn't have someone in his life who could teach him black things, like how to take care of his hair or his skin. And, like, he didn't have, like, a fade until he was 24. Um, and so he looked crazy in high school. But now he's hot, so he just gets DMs all the time. Yeah, so, I happy thought this ending. was cute. I thought this was cute because this is so my grandma, too. He's like, my mom would just put me in the shower, cut my hair all the way around with a one on the clipper, you know? <laughs> I was picture. like all the cousins when we were kids lining up to get our hair cut by our grandma in the shower <laughs> with different different clippers. I had a mushroom. Yeah. I was clippered around the side, and then I had like a big mushroom uh-huh. on top. 
But yeah, we all had the we all had some kind of bowl and clipper haircut. Oh, but yeah, so, he's like, but then when I realized what fades were, then I became hot, and now <laughs> I get fifty to a hundred DMs a day from girls. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. I was like, oh fuck off. Okay, you and Jordan <laughs> deserve each other. You're hot no. braggarts, and I can't wait for you both to get fat and old. <laughs> So uh, then Jasmine is now saying, she's like, here's what I'm looking forward to this summer. I'm looking forward to expansion, expanding community, because every year we do this, it's for purpose. And it's just not, it's not just to do it. And so I'm watching this. I'm like, oh, that's good. And then Mariah's like, uh, like we come to the vineyard every year. She goes, girl, bye. You've only been to the vineyard once. <laughs> So yeah, she said like, twice. We do, th- like, yeah, or twice. Yeah, sorry. She's like, yeah, every time we do this, it's really for something bigger than we. <laughs> you've this, you've only been here twice. You're also making it sound very like I get the black excellence thing that she's saying, like you know, make a community and this and that. But you're also like just going to party in the Hamptons for two weeks. Like, let's stop making it sound like you're building homes for poor people. You know what I mean? She's like, so, this is more than just a vacation. I was like, this is a vacation. Okay, this is a vacation. This is Alex still, at the end of the day, shots. a very horny torny vacation, you know? But so congrats Jack- on taking it. But she's like, no, I'm still going to have my moment. She goes like, whatever black excellence means to each and every one of us, that's the expansion. Being rooted in something. So they all cheer. And then Preston's like, um... He goes, I actually really hate the expression black excellence like i despise it and they start playing church music behind it <laughs> yeah, the, music, like, the music goes arr, arr, <laughs> start playing organ. like organ organ gospel music he's like for me black excellence is like my mom <laughs> who barely graduated high school and had three kids by 23 and never went to college and was just able to survive that's black excellence and he's like i think that the expression black excellence is rooted in what white people consider successful and they're all just like looking at him like and you know jasmine was like this was supposed to be my moment and because he does it in the full preacher way too and i am the preachy gay okay i'm the judgy gay of my friends and i loved this segment where he gets his own organ i want it i want my own organ music because he's like for me black excellence is my mom who barely graduated high school like he does the full-on sermon voice and everything i was like i'm so jealous of this queen right now i'm getting an organist i'm getting a fucking a organist idea. that's It'll it will be at the new york show and so Preston's like, I am a black queer activist, so I have a lot of different opinions about a lot of different things. And people say to me, like, like, no, you don't have to say everything that's on your mind. And I'm like, ah, you're lucky that I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're basically just like staring at him like, mm-hmm. They're like, okay. fine. Thanks for killing <laughs> that fun. Okay. Great. It was just literally to do a shot. Okay. Yeah. It was a like cheer. Just trying to say something nice. So, so then uh, uh, they yeah. break up after food, and everyone starts kind of getting ready to go outside and hang out in the hot tub. And Jasmine's talking to Brianna, and she's like, So, just to be clear, you're not going to give any of these men a chance? I mean, there's so many tall people here. Are you sure? <laughs> and Brianna's like, No, would you do that? And she's like, I'm married. Have you not heard? I'm married. And she's like, oh, Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, in a serious relationship. I told this girl I'm in a serious relationship, right? Yeah, Jasmine's like, to go across the pond to live with someone seems aggressive. I mean, we're missing some steps. We're like we're like leaping like frog. I mean, I think the first thing you have to do is put both of your drinks next to each other and try to guess which one's which and then realize it doesn't even matter because you're in a committed relationship. I mean, you got to get to that point before you move to Munich. And Jasmine's got this weird obsession with making everybody fuck, which I really don't like. Like, this isn't The Bachelor. This is Summer House. You just have yeah. to go have fun. We don't, you'll, people are eventually going to fuck. It's nature. We don't need mm-hmm. you to do it. You know, it's creepy. Yeah. So then Nick makes drinks for people and everyone's in the hot tub. And Nick starts this one. He's like, okay, guys. Of course, it's always the nerdy guy with 18 pairs of different colored pants who's like, okay, let's do a drink. Uh, Dare or truth. Okay, so Amir, I dare you to kiss a woman you find attractive. Right. No, that's fucking assault. (laughs) How about that? How about let's stop like having the guys fucking assault people to start as a fun game. What the 
fuck is that? If someone was, if someone was like, I dare you to just pick one and make out with them. Gross. Get your fucking hands off of me. Because I'm sure and I would be the I one will, that they all chose. You know. I will be layering layering in an organ in post production just to, <laughs> as per your wishes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah. But Amir kisses Jordan on the hand. He's very, he's very. Because she pushes about him it. away. She's not going to let oh, him. No, kiss. He tries. He that. tries to go in for the kiss, and she's like. Ah, ah, ah. So then they make the same dare for Alex, and so he then goes and kisses Jordan on the cheek, and Jordan's like. Ugh. Of course, you guys all want to kiss me, but like, no one in the house is blind, so like, obviously, yeah, I'm like super hot. But like, dare them to ask the question that they want to know, or like, dare them to want to like know me in some way. Like, we get it, I'm cute. Like, but like, what else? And it's weird because I'm like, I totally agree, but it's like, also, she's, <laughs> I just love. She's like, I'm just like so hot, guys. Like, this is a given, okay? Like, let's move on from that. That I'm just like deeply, wonderfully hot and gorgeous, okay? What else would you like to talk about? Literally, the only thing you've talked about this entire time is about how hot you are <laughs> since, since since you've come on the show. But why don't you so, talk about something? Yeah. So then, um, but also, like, I get it. It's it's like you come into this new situation, and everyone's just like, "Okay, who wants to fuck Jordan? Who's right. going to get Jordan?" You know, it's yeah. Grody. That's why I say I, I agree with her, but I think it's also funny that she does talk about how hot she is also a lot. Yeah. So Preston's like, uh, well, Mariah, I dare you to give Nick a da- lap dance. How about we stop daring? What the fuck? It's just everyone's trying to have these men. Tr- it's gross. They're just all trying to have like a real world moment. Like, God, it's on a reality TV. And we're, we're like, reality TV show. We're in the hot tub. It's like the real world. Like, let's get crazy. Yeah, but and it's all like guys the doing the dares. It's all yeah. guys doing the dares. And they're all daring each either each other to do sexual shit to the girls or the girls to do sexual shit to them. It's, gr- it's creepy. It's very Love Island. I think I'm desensitized because I watch Love Island UK. So, yeah. um, uh, so then Mariah like does like a little booty shake for Nick. So he basically doesn't get a lap dance. And then Alex, well, hear your wish. Alex gets dared to sing a song. And so he's like, all right, I, I can be intentional about singing because uh, I have a lot of different singers and musicians in my family. And I have a cousin who's a really popular singer. And Jasmine's like, it's John Legend. His cousin's John Legend. He's yeah. just trying to be so modest about it. So he sings a song. It's like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and I'll just say um, that is definitely not John Legend. So then uh, Jasmine starts screaming and jumping out of the hot tub. It's like, oh my God, it was a frog, you guys. It was a frog. A frog that touched a married person. <laughs> so. um, hello, I already met my prince. We don't need you, frog. <laughs> so now everyone goes to bed and Silas is like to Jasmine and Betty's like, can I get a quickie tonight? She's like, ew, stop it. So it's the next day. Yes. Day two out of 15. Day two out of 15. So we get some sunshine. Um, we Oh, that's a song. <laughs> we got the sunshine of a pool time. The sunshine living the hot life. I like, the, I like Trixie Monocle. It's like, okay, the show is called Summer House. All right, one song. What's coming in the summer? Sunshine, hot, hot. Some, summer, summer, hot, hot. The next one should be about a house. I'm going to say door knob, door door knob open door window window <laughs> oh got it got it print perfect paul get that one on the books mm-hmm. so everyone's waking up and nick's cleaning the kitchen i mean one thing that is like really helpful about having someone who brings like 27 polo shirts is that they're usually pretty anal so they're going to do a lot of cleaning for you and then um silas is like i have work to do i i'm still working so let me set up two laptops in the middle of the kitchen to do my work. I'm like, you got this whole house? You can't set up two laptops in your bedroom for crying out loud? You got to do Yeah, work that's exactly right. You have to sit in the center of the entire house where everybody comes through with not one, but two fucking laptops. Like, I'm Come working, on. everyone. I'm, it's like a very, like, it's a very presentational uh, you know, view of him working. He's very much it's like... Kyle. It's Kyle. Yeah. It's like, I'm doing work right now. So... Yeah. Um, so Bria's like kissing her dog and everything and there's like Silas and Jasmine are kissing in the kitchen and Nick goes out for a run he's doing the Carl thing where he runs in the morning and um, Silas is like when I have my time off I'm usually 
fulfilling my military duties in the armed reserves, army reserves, and I work hard because my family emigrated from Liberia, and I want to make sure that my story is a successful one. And then meanwhile, they cut to like Amir. He's got like at the Mr. Coffee being like, oh my God, why is this the most intricate coffee pot in the world? <laughs> you can't figure out the coffee pot. While, He's like, like does Silas anybody else see computers? this? Does Dude, anybody like, else see this? The coffee pot literally won't work because I'm so hot. It's like, <laughs> cannot even get to work. You can do it, buddy, okay? <laughs> Just relax. I can't be the first hot person you've seen. Yeah, Silas is like, financial analysis, financial analysis. Gotta go to work at the army, financial analysis. And Amir's like, how do you work a coffee pot? <laughs> <laughs> so then Alex is on the lawn shirtless taking selfie pictures selfie videos at chest level you know it's like only really hot people do that too by the way hold a selfie at chest level like oh. who else does it? every the rest of us are like holding the fucking camera up to the ceiling you know yeah you know what i hate when hot people do when they do their thrust trap videos i hate when they end with like a little like like they do like the peace sign with their hand it's like and you always think like you're watching like oh maybe like this, this time they won't do like the yeah, like the little piece, like smile and a peace sign. And I'm like, this time maybe they won't do it. Oh, they snuck it in at the end. They, I, for some reason, it really bothers me. It's like, we don't need the peace sign. I kind of peace sign sometimes. Um, I don't do thirst trap selfies, but I do kind of peace in pictures just because I don't know what to do. But this is the one that really kills me. When people stick, it's the Kim Zolciak, speaking of. The sticking your tongue out between your teeth, your open teeth, and then like touching the tip of your tongue to your top lip like this. I hate that. I don't get that one. I don't know why oh, that's just, a thing that people Everyone do. was doing that. Everybody's been doing that. I mean, maybe they just stopped, but it was going on for a very long well, time, and it bothered me. It hurt my feelings. I don't know why. Well, yeah, and of course, the one I hate the most are the photos of people, like, smiling with their mouth open, like, you know, like, they're, you know, that thing, because it's, the idea of it is, like, oh, you took a picture of me when I was having such a good time that I was laughing really loudly and you captured that moment. But Excuse like, no, was... me, that's called the Julia Roberts and that's what I do. Are you coming for me right now? Because first, it was the peace signing pictures and now you're coming for the Julia Roberts <laughs> No, no, no. Moves. So if you no, have no, something no. to say. You don't do it. There's, there's, a, there's a thing. There's a difference between having an open mouth smile and there's the one where it's like, oh, I'm acting like you just caught me in the middle of a hilarious moment that I was having. And this is like such an a spontaneous 80s, moment. 80s like, sitcom moment where you're like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just big. I'm just like stirring the cookie mix. And then the camera catches and you turn a smile real big. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different strokes it takes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Garrett, if she were here. Well, not Mrs. Garrett. Well, Mrs. Garrett actually was a Natalie house. Natalie Tilly <laughs> Blair. The original, the original thirst trap, Mrs. Garrett. <laughs> taking She's selfies. Like, Why don't people taking, ask me about me? Taking selfie Polaroids at chest level. Of her cookies. <laughs> I so, get it. I'm hot. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? Ask me a question about me. <laughs> So, <laughs> so anyway, Mariah's like, hey, Jasmine, um, let's go write for a little bit. So they go out, and Ma Mariah tells a story that in 2017, Jasmine was like, hey, bestie, why don't you come up to New York? You know, let's, like, have some fun in, fun in New York. But then what Jasmine didn't tell her was, was that she was being evicted. So Mariah moved up to New York to no place to live, and they wound up living out of Mariah's car and eating ramen noodles for five months. Yes, and they were taking showers at Planet Fitness. The homeless life. That's like me when I moved to New York. I didn't know anybody, and I was on the street for a couple of weeks, and I was a member of the city gym that was like $25, and I used to have to roll my fucking suitcase around mm -hmm. and take showers in that damn gym. I will never forget. I wish we had Planet Fitness back then. Huh. I mean, God, those sound like nice showers. These city, these city gyms were like prison showers. Not that that was always a terrible thing. <laughs> Why am I say. talking about this? I w that's back when I was like, guys, I get it. Why don't you ask me something else <laughs> in the shower? Guys, come on. Like, truth or guys, next time you drop the soap, like, how about you ask a question when you pick it up? <laughs> so, let's see. So, so then... So, basically, oh, they thought it was, like, a crazy experience. 
they wrote a pilot. It looks like the pilot was shot. They made a show. I don't think the pilot was picked up. Doesn't sound like the pilot was picked up, but super cool that they turned it into something and now they clearly have they've got something brewing so now they're writing so they go to sit down to write in this room and they sit on this white couch and then jasmine freaks out she's like oh my god the dog's been here so immediately i'm thinking oh my god there's a puddle of pee or there's poop but it's just hair rock bottom i'm looking it up there was um a documentary following seven gay men as they struggle with methamphetamine addiction (laughs) rock bottom that's very literal and then there's (laughs) one uh uh, stuck in the middle between two rival gangs, two friends stumble onto the wrong turf. Um, and well, then, if it, was, if it never made it to, well, let's see. There's a show called Rock Bottom in 2019. There's one called Rock B- Bottom between 2015 and 2020. Austerity hits Leeds, England. Okay, that's England. Um. Okay, so I think it was just a pilot, I think. But God, there's yeah, a lot of things if it didn't called get, Rock Bottom. I mean, Jesus. And if it didn't get... Well, oh, no, no, no. Rock Bottom, 2019, chronicles the cosmic comic adv- misadventures of a girl undergoing a life crisis after she locks herself out of her apartment with no pants on and is thereby forced to confront her emotional, philosophical, and logistical problems. Okay, so for a moment, I thought that's what this was because the picture showed uh, a woman dumpster diving, but... No, <laughs> that sounds like it. Could be it. But you know what? Though it's funny. The person who's in this movie, I know this person. That's wild. In real life, yeah. I, or from I met, things. I know. I know him through our friend Sita. That's so bizarre. Oh wow! Anyway, what a okay, world. So this is <laughs> we're at an hour, and I think we're at five minutes into this show. So okay. So the point is, there's dog hair on this sofa, and Jasmine is losing oh, her mind. You know. So now listen, I have a dog who leaves so much hair every, it's horrible. Like I literally have hair removers all over my house for people. I feel so guilty. And that's in my own home. I feel so guilty. I cannot imagine bringing my shetty ass dog without telling people that is so rude. And then letting your dog all over the furniture to get hair everywhere. Mm -hmm. Brie is fucking rude. That's, that's it. Because also, you know, these people are like, we're on TV right now. We're trying to look good and we're gonna have hair all over ourselves so then we cut to to milo in the pool and you're just swimming around and bria's like go milo go hey milo i taught him how to swim in the ocean i was like in the ocean that just feels very aggressive for a small dog i'm surprised that dog's alive just not only from the waves but from the predators for crying out loud i would would you ever let a small dog learn to swim in the ocean she's Hell irresponsible no. yeah she's not a good mom so then Jasmine's like, um, we can't even have a writer's meeting without dog hair being everywhere. And Mariah's <laughs> like, well, did she tell you about the dog? She goes, no, she just showed up with the dog. And Mariah's like, fine, I've heard enough. Let's go get her. We're going to do that. Bria, could you come here a sec? Uh, Jasmine needs to yell at you in the sunroom. So, um, <laughs> by the way, Nick I, and love, Jordan, I love the sorry. irony that like that Jasmine is like, yeah, my, my claim to fame is that I wrote a pilot about like living out of my car and it was like really tough. You just take showers at the gym and yeah, it was a rough and tumble. Like dog hair. Do I see dog hair? (laughs) (laughs) It's like how things have changed. So then we get a little clip of Jordan's love journey on the show. We go to the kitchen where (laughs) she puts something in the dishwasher and she goes, the dishwasher won't close. And it goes, that's giving a dish an experience to me. I was like, ooh, there we go. It's the beginning of a love a love story. Finally, someone is talking to her something. Some, someone is talking to her about something that's not about how hot she is. And it's how bad she is about placing dishes in the dishwasher. <laughs> ring them bells. Listen. Gonna ring. <laughs> <laughs> you got to ring them bells. Listen, Ronnie, you know what? Like, yeah. It's a dishwasher. It cleans dishes. We all know that. How about asking the dishwasher a question for once, okay? How about getting to know the dishwasher? (laughs) So back to the girls. Jasmine's like, my dog seriously is building a fort, and he's making me just lay down, babe. Just lay on it. What? What? Bueller is like, I don't like this discussion of Milo. (laughs) He's uneasy with another dog being discussed on the podcast. Yeah. So. Okay, so Jasmine's like, okay, well, to me, the considerate thing would be to let um, 
all of us know that you're bringing your dog. And that's kind of important. Like, Alex can't even properly do yoga without Milo's shit being around. And she goes, oh, really? Where's the shit? Show me the shit then. It, where's the shit? And she goes, oh, did you pick up the shit this morning? And she goes, yes, I did pick up the shit. So then they show the shit cam, I guess, of her picking up poop in the backyard, which I have to say, I was impressed because <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming from Bria. I would have guessed that she would have left it there, but she did. Now, that still leaves grass covered in the poop on the right. grass, but there's plenty of grass. So I don't know. I don't know where I'd like who's yeah, side I'd I mean, like I, on listen, right now. Listen. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put Bria on a pedestal for doing one of the basic things you have to do for a dog, which is clean up its poop. So like she doesn't people win any don't do it. Me. I know no, people, people don't do, don't it, do it. And let me tell you, one of the reasons that Lala Kent has always made me crazy. Well, actually, I liked her in her first couple seasons. Yeah. But I met somebody who used to live in the same building as Lala in that um, Beverly Grove. You know those Beverly Grove apartments yeah, where the hills. Yeah. Lauren Conrad's place. And yeah. she said that, yes. And Blossa, she said that Lala whatever. was always walking, yes. And she said that Lala was always walking around there, talking on the phone to her mom and walking her dog. And she would just let her dog poop everywhere and she would never pick up the poop. Wow. And one time someone said, Oh, you should pick up your poop. And Lala just gave them a dirty look and kept walking. I can't Whoa. stand people who don't pick up their dog poop. Truth You're monsters. Out. You're monstrous wow. people, okay? And that's why I'll never trust anything Lala says because no matter how nice she pretends, she's being or what a good person she's acting like that season she's a person who doesn't pick up her dog shit okay and she's probably gonna raise terrorists there wow. i said it give them lala more like give them pooper scoopers so jasmine is like yeah so jasmine here's the thing i think jasmine is right with this argument because like, it, it I, and i think ultimately what jasmine is really upset about was that bria just did not give her the consideration of a heads up so she's mad and she goes but her arguing i think she needs to work on her on her tactics because her response is I mean how would you feel if I showed up with like a tiger like mm, I feel like that's not like couldn't you just start with basic house cat <laughs> like I think yeah, house cat's like a I, really strong one to, to go with people have allergies tiger's, tiger's strong also you can't um, you can't come at someone like that with somebody else by your side you know, she shouldn't have had Mariah be like, okay, come in here. We need to have a talk with you because that's a ve- that's automatically two against wanting it. You shouldn't do that. Um, right. But, you know. So Bri- but, of course, Bria is totally unapologetic. She's like, um, you're being insensitive about the dog, and that's not my problem. You're being very insensitive. Oh, God, I can't. I cannot stand people who are like this. Like, sorry. Like, I know the sign says no dogs, but that's going to be your problem because I'm bringing my dog in. Well, you know why, though, right? Because it's my emotional support dog. <laughs> no. No, no. You don't get You're, to just say that. Emo- you could be emotionally supportive with your dog not on the sofa. So so then Jasmine is like, well, I feel disrespected. And Mariah's like, listen, listen, okay. Like, here's what I have to say. I hate. And then, then Milo just starts shaking the water off of himself. <laughs> Mariah's like, wet dogs. <laughs> <laughs> And Justin's like, listen, I just want to set some boundaries. And so Bria's like, I don't even know this person. Like, we're close enough for her to be like, yo, your dog's hair is bothering me. And I'd be like, okay, cool. But you wouldn't. You'd be like, okay, cool. My dog's hair is bothering you. So what else do you have to say about it? You know? Bria would be <laughs> because... the type to say, okay, well, you know what? You should sit on that sofa instead. Like, like I'm not going to change anything with my dog, but you should change your pattern instead. Right. So Jasmine's like, I mean, you never came up to me about the dog. And she goes, I told you I had brought a service animal. (laughs) So then um, Preston is now arrived and he's like, well, what I'm hearing from Jasmine is that she just wanted a heads up. And Bria's like, "Mm, this is my business and this is my dog and this is my emotional support dog. Okay. So... (laughs) The so well, then she all, does the, yeah, she goes, uh, listen, I'm not talking to you. I respect what you're saying. But when you can take it down a notch, Jasmine, I will talk to you. And Jasmine's like, what? I've, I'm not raising my voice. And she goes, this, this is just too much. And so she like storms out and closes the door behind her. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> so, so then um, Bria goes to the kitchen. Now she's like going to start a public campaign or she's gonna start campaigning for her side so she's going to get some votes so she goes to see she sees jordan and nick and she's like um 
are you guys fine with the dog being here? Because apparently uh, Jasmine's saying people have a problem with the dog. You don't have a problem with the dog. And they're like, uh, and you can see they're kind of like, we don't love the dog, but we don't want to get in the middle of this. So they're like, it's, they're like, fine. we're not fucking with Jasmine. I'm like, hell no, <laughs> you know? And so then Jordan's like, yeah, there's something weird with them anyway beyond this dog stuff. They've got weird energy. So then <laughs> Bria's like, okay, thanks. I'm finding Amir now. Amir! So, of course, <laughs> guess where Amir is? He's working out. Where else yeah. would he be? The library. So he's <laughs> there, and... Um, she scares him by coming in and so she's like so apparently she said that everyone has a problem with my dog in the house so like i'm literally coming to everybody to ask him do you have a problem and he's like uh no i mean look (laughs) i would appreciate it if the dog would send me less dms like fewer dms (laughs) but i I love him i love him it's great so then um so then jasmine's telling us like do i have an issue with bria no i mean bria and i work together and that's about it and like shanice is the one that recommended inviting bria and like bria was like not even my top priority of friends like sorry that woman so basically she's saying i wanted a different friend to come on and the producers uh like shanice put this person in front of the producers and the producers chose, Br- chose bria instead and i'm pissed yeah yeah oh that sounds yeah. about right yeah. yeah. So then um, Mariah calls her mom, and we find a little bit about her. She's a single mom, and she's got a little seven year old named Miliano. And he's staying with, I mean, it's just one eye away from a delicious cookie. You know what I mean? <laughs> Would it have killed you to name him after that cookie? Come on. Come on. You know, it's like, it's like naming a, it's like naming a, a child uh, like a Geneve. Do a Geneva. <laughs> delicious cookie. Delicious pepperidge farm yeah, cookie. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> it's like naming your child chocolate sip. Could you just put an H in there? It's like, Give me a chocolate it's chip. It's like chips hoy. Come on. <laughs> get the A in there. <laughs> so then um, Bria is calling her boyfriend, and she's like, there was drama because Jasmine got into it over Milo. And like, not only that, that she keeps saying, like, don't you find any of these guys cute? And I'm like, um, excuse me, she's disrespecting my relationship with you. And he's like, there's always people who want to bring you down. So this is how life is. And I've got your back. Don't worry. No one will put you down. I'm coming over there. <laughs> yeah. No, I shall put you down as long as you move to Munich and be with me the rest of your life. So, um, so then, so now Alex and Amir are tossing a football around because oh, they're bros. And, um, uh, Amir like played rugby. So he throws the ball like rugby style, but like Alex throws it like football style. And so then Jordan like joins in and they start asking, Amir starts asking Jordan about her dating life. And she's like, you know, I'm so picky because it's like the whole Playboy thing. Because I was in Playboy. I was like a Playboy, you know, like Playboy. Because, you know, I'm hot. And, uh, like, it's just, like, so hard. Because I'm always, like, with guys, like, are you a fan? Is this, is like, cool to you? Or do you, like, actually want to get to know me for me? And that's part of the reason why I've just been celibate for the past year. <laughs> Give me <laughs> a here's... fucking a break. Who recognizes somebody from a Playboy centerfold, like, a long time ago? Like, how... I'm sorry, you know, but maybe you shouldn't have it at the top of your Instagram profile because you know it is. <laughs> I'm going to look her up right now. So Amir's like, really? Wow, it's all a bit. And he just starts looking at his nails like, okay, you're going to have to find someone else. This is not good. This is not worth it. Not worth it. And of course, because she says that she's um, she's questioning people's intentions and by eliminating sex, it allows, allows her to find out if someone's just like really interested in to get to know her for her. So of course, no, it Alex... doesn't. First of all, that's a flawed philosophy because it means that they're waiting to get, they're waiting to have sex with you. I mean, look, <laughs> if you're that gorgeous and a guy's not, you're not having sex with the guy, he is going to be as nice as possible until you have sex with him. Then you find out who the guy really is. That's yeah. what I say. Unfortunately, I think that might, you know, just that's guys are terrible, you know, and they yeah. are con artists and they will do that yeah. to you. So, yeah. and here's a con artist right here, Alex. He's like, I think that's beautiful. You know, there's something really magical and special about deciding to focus on yourself. And I've taken that path myself. I was like, famous cousin, John Legend, stop trying to push that booze on me, okay? I'm being intentional with how I live my life, okay? <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, but I have to go to Jordan's Instagram. Okay, let me see here. Jordan don't, Instagram. Load it listen, up. Listen, Ronnie, don't see. make her mad. Don't make her mad. You don't want to be crossing Jordan. 
<laughs> okay, it does not say Playboy whatever on her uh, Instagram. So I was wrong. It says NYC DJ model potato enthusiast. So, okay, she's way, winning my heart over. Potato enthusiast That's is good. good. She's co-founder of Women With Voices. I think I like that. I like the name of it. She's creator of At 844 Swim. And she's the director of Vibes with a bunch of emojis after it. And she has a SoundCloud. Okay, so I can see. A, and wait, wait. these are not all, by the way, these are also not all thirst, like literally, thirsty pictures. Like literally, there's, by the way, everything she said is totally respectable and like totally realistic to ask. Just She just wants people to find out about her instead of just like, you know, ogling over her. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's just that it's, I think that the way it was presented on this show is just like I'm a Playboy bunny. I'm a play. I'm hot in my DMs or whatever. But like the truth is that like you can see the way that Amir like as soon as she said that she's celibate and the way that Amir just like looks down at his fingernails like ugh boring stupid I don't like her anymore. It's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is what she has to deal with. You have to kind of have that attitude with guys because they never stop. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see. Jordan is okay. So they have that discussion, and um, Brianna is, or sorry, Bria is on the couch. Okay, so she's like lying on the couch, and Nick has some device that he's like wrapping her legs in, and it's some kind of thing that sends an electric pulse through your legs yeah. or something. It's like a thing that athletes use. It looks like it looks like the, she has like giant like moon boots on that go all the way up to like her waist. Cause it's like, yeah, they're doing something to her, to her legs. And so he, I don't know why he brought those to the house, but he did. He's a sports something. He's in he's sports, sports management, stylist. but I guess Sabbles yeah. in sports physical therapy. I don't know. So she's sitting on the sofa doing that. And then Jasmine and Nick, they like sit down at the table uh, nearby and Jasmine is like, or is it Jasmine and Mariah? I don't remember. But Jasmine sits down and she's like, ugh, I am mentally spent by what we talked about earlier. I mean, Bria this morning was so difficult. And it's like, what is happening here? We're going to have to like figure this out. We have to talk and figure it out. And Bria's like, hello, I'm right here. It's like a foot away from you. And so Jasmine's like, oh my God, when did you even get there? She's like, I'm doing leg therapy. She goes, um, okay. So Bria's like, oh, so now she's being fake. So what the hell? So then Bria's like, okay, let's just talk then. I can't run away from you. I'm literally stuck in a device. So let's yeah. talk. So Jasmine goes, well, if I offended you, I apologize. <laughs> you know, I'm married. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and she goes, but, you know, it's a very vulnerable position to curate a trip like this. Mm. I was like, you curated a trip? Are you fucking she's kidding so me? right now. She's so oh vulnerable. Oh, my God. Yeah. Curating because, a like, trip. No, it's such a vulnerable position to be a married person curating a trip for single people who haven't, you know, fulfilled their life yet. And like, you know, because if everything goes right and everyone gets married, everyone's like, yay. But then if anything goes wrong, it's like, look at the Coopers. And by the way, just so you know, I am one of the Coopers. Okay, you can hang with me. Okay, because I'm, I'm married. <laughs> so Bria's like, okay, I'm sorry I was rude. I should have let you guys know we're going to have a dog in the house and moved ahead accordingly. No, you should have asked. Yeah. Bria, you should not have just said, I'm bringing a dog. You should have a said, hey, dog. can I bring a dog? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a stupid, long-haired, hairy dog. dog okay? On top of it. So then Jasmine's like, Jasmine. <laughs> Who swims in the ocean like a fucking weirdo. <laughs> this dog okay? learned how to swim in the ocean. Okay, this dog's been doing documentaries called like 100 Foot Wave, but it's really just like a regular wave. It just feels like it's 100 feet to it. So Jasmine is like, I'm triggered, okay? I'm a wife now. There's a sense of stability, and I still have some habits I picked up from living out of a car, and I still feel like I have to be in fight mode and defend myself. And I don't have to be, because I'm married. I'm married. I'm a Cooper. Yeah, and Bria's like, also, respect my relationship, too, because I have a relationship, and you don't value it. And she's like, okay, okay, clean slate time. <laughs> Normally, I'd leave the slate dirty, but I'm married now. It's got to gotta keep it clean. <laughs> so um, now everybody's getting ready to go to dinner. And Milo is crying on the bed while Bria gets ready. And again, I say, that is not <laughs> an emotional support dog. Who's okay? getting that is a support. terrified purse dog. That is, that is an emotional distress dog. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. So then there's like doing photos and they're going out to dinner. There's like 
to talk about there's no street lights and they're talk they're actually talking about the history of uh, Martha's Vineyard and its history with the back- black population and how Mariah says how slaves came up to B- uh, Martha's Vineyard to be free and that Oak Bluffs uh, Preston says Oak Bluffs opened up the first inn for black vacationers and there's even a black beach and that it's also is a place where people who were mixed race would come to for you know to get a, to get away from everything and they talk about famous uh, black celebrities who have homes up there like Spike Lee and Obama and um, Kamala Harris, et cetera. So we got like, we hear about that a little bit and then they get to dinner where they can, you know, get back to doing petty reality star things. Uh, yeah. So they do. So Amir's like, so Jordan, what are you going to get? Are you cold, Jordan? You're not wearing a jacket. Here, take my jacket, Jordan. It's like, oh my God. Do ugly girls just freeze to death? I think so. I think, yes. Yeah, if you're hot, you get the jacket. So um, then Jordan's like, uh, they're ordering food, but Jordan doesn't order much because she's going to make a potato at home. <laughs> she's like, potatoes are my favorite. And uh, So yeah, this is when I warmed up. I was like, okay, I <laughs> like her led now. With that. Should have led yeah. with potatoes. You shouldn't have led with how hot you are. You should have led with how hot you like potatoes. <laughs> then that the would have been with you. On her Instagram... Like her number one story highlight thing is potatoes. Like before all else, before her branding, before anything, it's like potato. <laughs> so um, Jasmine's like, okay, so let me say this. Is anyone interested in anyone here? Because people are single. Are there some prospects? God, so I'm because I wrote, um, shut up. You're so annoying. <laughs> but then I was really glad that but the entire her. cast <laughs> gave her that look like, God, shut up. You're so <laughs> annoying. I know she's so annoying, but I really enjoy her because I think I I see a lot of like my worst aspects in her, so I like enjoy it. So um, not the single. Oh, I know I don't do any of that stuff. But um, then so Jasmine's like, we're all attractive people, we're intelligent people, so everyone should be getting married. So who's gonna start first? And Jordan's like, God, stop it. So then. The food arrives and Jasmine's like, okay, so I do want to circle back to the struggles of singlehood that no one was talking about except for me. So, like, I want to know a little bit more about everyone. Like, everyone tell where they're from and what they're working on, okay? Who's working on a screenplay? Who's still single? Who still feels like they have a void in their life because they're not married to someone? Yeah, she's like, we can start with Jordan. And Jordan's like, um, well, I would love to have an authentic conversation, one without a prompt. Oh, my God. And now I officially <laughs> love Jordan. She loves potatoes, and she's putting an end to this bullshit game they do on every single Bravo show where they're trying to force everything out of everybody. Thank yes. you, ma'am. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, Jordan's great. Jordan's great. So then Bria's, Bria's like, I feel the same way, too. So Jasmine's like, great, okay, fair. I'm totally at ease with this decision that you guys have made on my television show that I've arranged. <laughs> I'm totally chill right now. So then um, Mariah asks if Bria and Jasmine talked it out. And Jasmine's like, yes, we were able to have a conversation. And I don't know if you all know, but me, Bria, Jordan, and um, Shanice all worked at the club together in New York City. So, And there weren't a lot of black girls who worked there, so we stuck together. I mean, I know me and Jordan hit it off immediately, and I do consider Jordan a sister cousin. And Bria, well, <laughs> brings dogs. <laughs> Nobody really knows about it who get hair everywhere and doesn't really seem to care. So that <laughs> happened. That was fun. That was my totally non-prompting uh, participation in an organic conversation. I'm not holding back a prompt. So then Silas is like, yeah, I love the dynamic uh, that Jordan and, and Jasmine have. But you know what? In training, I would call her and Jordan would be out and about. And I'm just like, I'd call her and Jordan and they'd be like out and about. And I'm just like, huh. I'm like, okay, so what's wrong with that? Also, what were you doing at two in the morning at training? Wouldn't huh. that mean that you were at a bar after training or something? There, or were there you we running go. laps every night at training? Because it sounds to me like you guys were out drinking. And I'm from an army town, and I know what happens after training at two in that's, the morning. Okay, that is I've correct. had a lot of it. Ding so ding ding. Mike, Mike, the uh, he's the very inten- the intentional guy. Oh, no, not Mike. Alex. I kept on calling him Mike. Alex is like. Yeah, I can see Jordan being the toxic friend. 
I was like, whoa. Jeez. Like, everyone's like, what? What was that about? He just laughs. Well, he's like, trying to neg her because right. she and Amir are getting close, and he feels like he's the intentional one, and he's got a famous cousin. So why is nobody picking yes. him? Which is so funny, then, because if you're um, intentional, you shouldn't have to neg someone, but just goes to show the fuck boy's coming out. Yep. So then Jordan's like, why am I toxic? And he's like, oh, I'm totally kidding. So Jordan goes, what do, you, what do you mean? What was I taking her away from Silas? And he goes, it's 2 or 3 a.m., ma'am. And she's like, but that's New York. And Bria's like, yeah, people don't even go out till 1.30 in New York. And Silas goes, well, it just seems whenever you were out late, it's always with Jordan. Dun, dun, dun. And in the middle of this, Nick tells us, uh, Jasmine knew Jordan before she knew you, Silas, and she made it this far in life without you. So, like, basically like stay off like go away. and he's like she, he's like he does not want smoke from jordan trust right. me and jordan's like so does she have a curfew and he goes just during the pandemic at 21 years old i enlisted with the army reserve and we were away from each other for over six months so it's still new to see her in this environment with her girls and i'm still adjusting to that well you better fucking get used to it I mean, I don't know yeah. who the fuck you think you're married to, but that shit's not going to last. Also, these two are clearly not ready to be married. Right. Anybody? Yeah. Would you get married after five minutes of knowing each other? No. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by this. But I think it was that it was in 2021. I don't think he was 21 when they got married. Thank you. Because I was like, how does that? No. Yeah. How does that work? <laughs> Okay. No, it was in 2021. So, uh, and then he goes, yeah, there was one night I called you and you were like, oh, babe, we just got some free drinks. And I'm like, you got what? Who's buying the drinks? And I think that's a fair question. And Jordan's like, um, if we are at like the daily front row party, it's an open bar. It's like, that's called free drinks. Like nobody's buying us free drinks. And by the way, it's also possible that if there was someone buying free drinks, maybe someone bought free drinks for Jordan and like was like, oh, I'll get them for your friend too. Like it's, it's, or maybe they brought drinks for your girlfriend. Who fucking cares? Yeah, it's you're the not the there. World. Okay, yeah. yeah, and she can drink. So Jordan's like, this is exhausting. That men think they need to be our knight in shining armor, and that we cannot go out with being prey for the predator, which is true. But men think this because men are predators. Yeah. That's the thing. They, pre- <laughs> they pretend to be the sh- nine shining army because they know they want their predators. So yeah. then Jordan's like, um, "We go out. We're adults. She makes decisions. I don't have to. Sh- I don't have to shackle her and say and like say stay out till three a.m. And then Nick is long. Nick is like, "Yeah, what's wrong with going out? Going outside? Like, what's wrong with that?" And so I was like, "No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying, you know, it was late." I'm like, you're not saying it was late. You're not just commenting on how interesting it was that it was a late hour. You were saying, like, you shouldn't be out late because you're married and it's inappropriate because, you know, like, you're going to do something wrong, which is totally retrograde. It's also really gross that he's putting this on somebody else. Like, if this is your problem, that's your problem with your wife. And you talk about that in private. You don't bring it up in public. And then shame their friend like their friend is some kind of slut because she still goes out at night while while you're married. Well, it also takes away some weirdo. It also, like, just takes out, like, it... By saying, like, oh, Jordan's, like, a bad influence if she, with Jordan, then she's going to go out and make bad decisions. It totally, what that does is it eliminates any sense that Jasmine has any free will. Like, oh, she just does what her, these people, like, I need to be there to be a good influence. Because Jasmine is, like, too, like, uh, she doesn't have, she needs someone to think for her, to make her decisions. And then when Jordan's making decisions for her, those are bad decisions. That totally eliminates Jasmine from the situation, which is so patronizing. Uh, yeah, girls can't think. Where's so my then, organ? Um, Jasmine is um, like, well, that's my husband. And we have the last name now, literally. So if anything goes down with my man, I'm going to stick beside him. Because we are literally one at this point. According to Jesus Christ, Jasmine, shut the fuck up. Your man is coming for your friend in front of everybody. You need to tell him to shut the fuck up and you'll talk yeah. about it at home. And not to keep that shit up for your poor. What are you doing? You're a terrible yeah, friend. this guy's terrible I, also. Jasmine sucks. And I'm so glad she's on this show. By the way, yeah. But God, she sucks in literally every scene she's in. She's wrong. She cracks me up though. so far. So me Preston, uh, Preston's like, I date men, and I can't disassociate what he's saying about protection of a woman because I still feel like I need to protect my spouse, and I can't disassociate gender from that. And I think if we do, we are all being disingenuous. And the the 
the organ music is back and they're all staring at him like i don't think i follow what he's saying Right. And he's like, yeah. most mainstream men have this idea that they have to be the He-Man or the Incredible Hulk over women. And even if that's rooted in love, a woman might want protection sometimes from her man. But that woman also decided to go out with her homegirl. They're so like, what do we do? And no one's listening anymore. It's like, dude, you, like, everything uh, doesn't have to be a fucking speech. You know? They're just, just looking at him like, oh, God. George just doing a countdown to her potato. She's like, oh, God, 55 more minutes. I can have my big potato. So Jordan goes, well, I also, by the way, I don't have a counterpart. So what the fuck do I look like out in these streets if, as if I don't have any regards for my safety? Like, I'm extremely protective and aware of my surroundings at all time. And despite whether it's 2 or 3 a.m., because I've known her prior to you. She's basically saying, like, you're acting like I'm just this totally irresponsible twit. And I'm not. Yeah, so whatever. That guy's an idiot. So if that's the first episode and he's that comfortable being that chauvinistic... Good luck with the rest of the season, buddy. Yeah. Well, I think it's a really great cast. I think this show has a lot this of was good. potential. It was really good. This was really good, for especially for a first episode of something. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. liked it. So, everybody, go check out this show. It's a good one to watch. And thank you so much for being with us. We will talk to you next time. And... Some of you later in the week in New York City for Real Housewives of New Jersey and then in Washington, D.C. for uh, uh, Vanderpump Rules. So we are doing a bunch of extra recaps this week to make up for those being late. So just keep coming back every day. There will be something up. Tons of content, as always. We love you guys. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Alison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Dana C. Dana Do. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolis. Hava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no less namey. Sipped some scotch with Jessica Trotch. Kristen the Piston Anderson. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kiss Arino to Lisa Lino. There ain't no problem that Sarah Salvia can't solve ya. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Erica, 500 days of summers. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kennedy. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts before you go tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.